Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to start our part two of our Web Basics series. And uh, we're going to basically make a web page today in Composer. Now, you should have already installed it from Sea Monkeys, and if you don't know where that is, just go to Google, type in Composer, and look for the download address. Uh, the web is fluid and it changes a number of times and so you just need to keep that name in mind in a Google search engine and you can usually find just about anything you need. But it is under the name SeaMonkey now. So I'm going to go to Programs and I'm going to go to SeaMonkey and I'm going to hit SeaMonkey and then up comes my SeaMonkey browser. Then all I need to do is go to File, New, and Compose Page. And now I have a blank page and I'm going to start building a website. Let me show you the website we're going to build. It's right here and if I go to preview it doesn't look a lot different. Let's go back to normal. So I'm not seeing a lot of difference here. Maybe the uh, outer lines go away and now you see uh, but you don't see the image. So how do we actually view this the way it's supposed to look on the web? Well I've got we're going to go to the web folder that I have it in on my local machine. We're going to click on that and actually look at the HTML page. Let's do that right now. I've actually put this in my documents in a folder called Mike's site. And there's the web page. Just, just click on it. And that's how the website is supposed to look. So kind of a little bit of a glitch there in uh, Composer, but we're going to work with it just by clicking on the website in the actual folder. And uh, very simple web page. It's just, uh, hey, this is Mike's page. Uh, here's a photograph and a little bit of blurb about my family and me. And then a blog link. So you click on that and up comes my blog. So let's go ahead and build that right now in Composer. Now, the first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and create a folder in my documents where we're going to put the website. Okay. So I already have one called Mike's site. Let's create a new one. So I'll just right click here and go uh, new folder. And let's make a folder and we'll call it um, basics2. And I'm going to open that up. I'm going to put a few things in there, a few folders in there that I can keep some assets in. Let's create an images folder. And let's create a videos folder. And let's create a documents folder. We'll just call it docs. Now, people do this uh, many different ways. This is just one way of doing it. I like to keep everything organized in folders. Some people keep one super folder and all the little folders are inside that. Some people just spread their pages all over the place. It's just whatever you feel comfortable with. But it is very important to come up with a methodology, stick with that, and remain organized because you can literally come up with hundreds of pages and that can become very confusing if you don't have an organized way of approaching that. We're going to put our HTML page on the outside of these folders and that HTML page is going to draw assets from those folders into the HTML wrapper if you, that's what you want to call it. So let's now create our page in Composer. So we're looking at Composer with nothing in it and let's just say a little bit about the architecture. It is a very simple HTML editor and you know what? I love that because I deal in programs like Flex and Flash and where everything's are so complicated. Now they're Cadillacs, you can do quite a bit with them. But it's nice to be in something simple for a change. You got a new folder here, an open file, a save, a publish, a print. You have links here, images, tables, and spell check. And then you've got some actually some uh, text editing here below. Let's click on uh, this right here. Now we can add some text. We'll say uh, this is a web basic site. And we'll just highlight that. And we can actually come here and click on the text and choose a header. Let's just choose header one. Ooh, that's pretty big. Let's choose header two. And, you know, it's just trial and error. You can just come along here and just choose one until you find one you like. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of methodology is in here. There's a huge amount of study on head one, head two, head three, what they all mean. We're going to skip over all of that. Now, I want to put an image in here. So what I need to do is go back and make sure I have an image inside of my web development folder. So let's first save this file into that folder. So we're going to go save as. And it wants us to give it a title, so we'll call it Web Basics 2, since this is the second tutorial. 
hit OK. And it's taken me to uh, the previous uh, site, but here's da my documents, and I created a folder, and we called it. We created a folder, and we called it Basics 2. Let's click on that, and let's go ahead and save this site in that folder. And now, as we save, we'll be putting everything where it's supposed to go. And now let's go back to that folder and put an image in that folder that we can bring into this website. Let's do that right now. I'm back in my documents and I want to go to basics 2 and there's my images folder I want to put an image right there now I'm gonna use Snagit to do that with and I have a tutorial on the web a YouTube tutorial on Snagit just go and view that if you want to see what we're doing here but I'm gonna grab the Sea Monkey logo so I'm gonna bring up Snagit this is a TechSmith product I probably use this product three or four times a day you can actually purchase this product by going to www.techsmith.com. Let's go and get out of this photo right here. I already snagged up my family. And snag is fairly easy to use. You just click this icon, highlight what you want to capture. There we go. We'll save that Sea Monkey logo. And it's saved right here. And then at this point, you want to basically now just save it wherever you want to save it. So we'll go save it in my documents. Let's go to Basics 2, go to Images, and we'll save it as C Monk Image. And we saved it as a JPEG. And we can now get out of this. And now let's bring that image into Composer. And all we have to do is click the Images tab. And it's going to ask us for the image location, so we can actually browse to that. It keeps taking me back to the previous folder. So let's go to Basics 2 and go to Images and just click on the image. So that's very nice. You can navigate to what you want to use. We'll create a tool tip. We'll say Sea Monkey logo and some alternate text as well. This is the Sea Monkey logo. Cool. And hit OK. And you can see I don't see anything uh, as far as the text is concerned. I see the text, but I don't see the image. And we said that previously that the preview doesn't really seem to work here. So if you actually want to see what this looks like, let's go ahead and save it. And let's bring up My Documents and click on it, and we'll look at the uh, HTML view. So I'll go back to My Documents. Let's click on Basics 2, and there's the HTML page. that has been saved from the composer. Let's click on that. And there we go. We've got a, uh, this is my website, or this is a basic, this is a web basic site and the C Monkey logo. It looks like it's stretched out a little bit. We'll shrink that some. So it looks a little bit better, but let's go back to Composer. We'll just move this over here so we can click on it whenever we need it. And I see I stretched my uh, logo out a little bit, so I, I lost its uh, integrity there, so it's a little bit pixelated. So we have that in there, and we'll put some text next to it. Now, here's the old trick in HTML, is to bring out a table. When you want to position things in HTML page, you can bring out a table, put them in the table, and then make those that table border invisible. 